Pakistan's devastated south. Diseases lurking in floodwaters that keep rising. Makeshift medical camps are already treating thousands suffering from waterborne ailments. Doctors here say they see up to 800 sick patients every day. Monsoon rains falling since June have killed more than 1,300 people, including over 400 children, and washed away villages, crops, and livestock. Millions have lost their homes. Now they sleep under open skies by the roadside or in temporary shelters after leaving with only what was on them. We could only manage to save our lives, he says. The government has called for more international help. Early estimates say the flooding has caused $10 billion in damage, the outcome of a climate crisis not of its own making. As the foreign minister pointed out this week, the country has nearly 3% of the world's population and contributes less than 1% of global carbon emissions. And yet, it continues to suffer. We consistently see uh, uh, climate devastation in the forms of either floods, monsoons, extensive droughts, extreme uh, heat waves. And frankly, the people of Pakistan, the citizens of Pakistan are paying the price in their lives, in their livelihoods for the industrialization of rich countries. According to this global emissions database, for context, the United States makes up about 4% of the world's population, but it is responsible for around 13% of global carbon emissions. Now, with forecasters predicting more rain in the coming days, authorities on Sunday breached one of the country's largest freshwater lakes in hopes of saving this city and this town. But up to 100,000 people have been displaced from their homes and villages now in the path of the diverted waters. Karen Seolin, City News.